One of the most challenging aspects of drum mixing is making sure super tiny ghost notes still sound audible without bringing up unwanted bleed. Most drummers who play ghost notes will be fairly particular with how they sound in the mix. And in this track, Max painstakingly edited out each ghost note on a second track where he'll apply different processing than what's going on on the main snare track. Check out how Max blends these ghost notes in. Now let's introduce, finally, let's introduce the ghost notes. Now we have all the instruments and we can clearly hear how much ghost notes we need. So I think I'll just remove the egg. Not remove, but make it quieter. 2 dB. No. 1 dB. And it's actually a good place to check the uh, ghost notes because we have this percussion on top. So must level the ghost notes with everything else, including percussion. Let's hear the snare ghost notes track. So it's that quiet that I hear the hi-hat as, as loud as the ghost note. So yeah, I had to manually do all these little hits and check that it begins properly. So again, think of the amount of hours that I personally spent. I was just, I, I could not tell my assistant to do that. I just love my assistant. So each hit, as you see manually, because it, it will trigger other things. So on the snare ghost notes themselves, I will put the, uh, low pass filter and maybe a little bit fundamental note boost now let's see how it works and again it goes to the drums group let's see how it works with the regular snare drum I flip the phase here and instantly it starts adding instead of just, you know, doing nothing. And don't worry that it sounds so dull now. That's not the aim of this exact track. Now let's listen to the snare bottom. already better but now these ghost notes sound a little unnatural they sound very dull and mid-rangey comparing to the rest uh, so i will just add another pro q and i will add a very wide band put it zero at zero db i will activate the side chain finally we got some crazy technologies going on in this mix um and uh the dynamic band will go up, so we'll extend it up instead of, you know, applying some sort of multi-band compression using the EQ or doing some de-essing. No, we'll use it the opposite way. And um, let's... There is a button somewhere. Ah, here it is. That activates the sidechain input. Now we'll send the uh snare ghost notes not route but send you let's compare That's roughly what I need. So everything up there, uh, I will, you know what? I will, um, I will mute the ghost notes. I will, we'll just listen to what the, this sidechain does to the snare bottom microphone. 
It's really interesting. So it brings them up. Not a crazy amount, but it does. Uh, let's actually see what it happens. What happens if we really, really accentuate it? And now, let's keep it accentuated for for now. I will return the snare ghost notes to the drum group. And we just have a very natural sounding ghost ghosted snare drum that has no bleed. Of course, we do not need that much, so I'll back it up. Um, and uh, because of the behavior of the snare drum, uh, on the super quiet parts, uh, the bottom snare has uh, some something else funny going on the top end. Just let me find it. Yeah, I guess it's just this frequency. I could just make it wider and take it off even more. And I will also slightly uh, decrease this boost. And maybe, uh, maybe I want some more um, mid-range here. So, my concern was that the ghost notes sounded a little hollow. They had a lot of high end, they have the fundamental, but there's nothing here, so maybe this will solve it. And uh, I kind of like it, but some of these notes jump out because it's super hard, it's almost impossible to control uh, the ghost notes that way, that perfectly. And these are way too loud. So what we can do? Ah, oh, let's do the same. It's very, very, very cool that we have this amazing plugin because I just cannot imagine the life before drum leveler. I just could not fix such things. No compressor would do it. I mean, I had one project where Right before the drum leveler came out, I I just removed uh, using the algorithm of Cubase. I removed, detected, and removed all the silence in between the hits, and then I just selected everything. I put the crossfades, and then I normalized, and then I had the normalized track and unnormalized track. And I, by blending these two together, I could um, use it as this compression knob, so I could add more evenness to the kick or to the snare. But you know the routing and just the amount of time span on that was crazy. This is now so you just use this plugin. Yeah. So here I just want to even I would just want to even out all the uh ghost. Roughly speaking, right? Right now, at least, they are not jumping around like crazy. Mm -hmm. 
maybe they have too much of this fundamental. Let me just disable it for a short while. Yeah, I like it more. It just doesn't sound weird that they're so deep. Um, and um, I think we're ready for vocals. <laughs> 